My favorite way to start my mornings is with journaling, Bible reading, and prayer. But of course, that doesn't last very long because the second anybody realizes I'm awake, they come in and join me. While that does cut into my alone time, it's one of my favorite ways to wake up by connecting with one of my kids. I am a task-focused person, so I get great satisfaction out of making my bed first thing in the morning. I'm a minimalist, so it's nothing fancy, but putting the pillows in place and pulling the blankets up tells me it's time to start the day and my first task is completed. The first thing I do is remove my pimple patches, which are my obsession these days. Check out this video to see how they work. Next, I like to brush my teeth. And this is actually my trick to get me to wash my face every morning. I know it's important to wash your face morning and night, but I still don't feel motivated to do it. So when I brush my teeth and then rinse my mouth, my mouth and my hands are already wet, so it feels less of a headache to wash my face at that point. So I always go into washing my face immediately after brushing my teeth. I like to use 7th generation dish soap because it's really great at degreasing your skin, but it's also non-toxic and very gentle on your skin. Now you'll notice I'm washing my face a second time. My esthetician told me once, the best thing you can do for your skin is wash it twice in a row, and that's morning and night. The first time you wash it, you're removing the oil, pollutants, makeup, toxins, anything that's gotten on your face during the day. The second time you wash it, you're actually able to get in and clean your pores now that you've removed all the contaminants. Of course, washing my face is messy, so this is the perfect opportunity for me just to wipe down my sink and my mirror. I try to do that every morning, and then my bathroom is clean and tidy every single day. I'm not really a big makeup person, but I do like the way that it makes me look more awake and happy and cheerful. So recently I've discovered Saint Makeup Palettes and I have fallen in love. It's taken the messy, disorganized, complicated factors out of makeup and it's made it really, really simple for me to um, place makeup on in a way that makes me feel beautiful and feel confident. And it's kept it really simple, so I can do my makeup in usually less than three minutes, which is a big win for me. If you want to see more and hear more about how I do my makeup routine, check out this video I've linked here. I never thought I would be the type of girl who would be able to contour and highlight her face. And so this has come with a little bit of practice, but the Saint Palette Contour System is so easy. I was even able to master it in like 10 applications or less. It totally shocked me. And now I actually have fun putting makeup on and I feel confident to kind of create new styles or try new things, which I never really could in the past. 
This is my all-time favorite mascara. It's L'Oreal Lash Paradise with Primer. Now, I didn't put the primer on today, but when I apply that first and then put the mascara on top, it almost gives me the look like I'm wearing false extensions. I have had my eyebrows micro shaded, and that is because I was one of those over pluckers from the 90s and 2000s, and you can check out my video on my eyebrows here. The next portion of my morning routine is to start one load of laundry. Now today I'm a little bit behind. I've got a couple baskets of clean laundry, so I'm going to deliver those to the kids' room so they can sort them and put them away. And then I'm going to go ahead and place a new load of laundry in the washer and rotate everything else out. If you see here, I do not fold my laundry when it comes out of the dryer. I use a sorting method. So the towels I'm lightly placing on top of the dryer and you can grab clean towels from there. The hand towels I'll just sort into piles and they will go into baskets in each bathroom for everyone to use. This saves me a ton of time folding clothes. That little clip you just saw me move is a magnetized bendable door arm. I can move it and rearrange it to hold my laundry door open or closed however I want to and it just kind of folds into place. It's been such a life changer because I used to hit my hand or my hip or my leg on that swinging door every time I tried to move past it. I will link that in the video description. Now, the last two things I do in my morning routine before I actually start our homeschooling day is to go over my planner and list of tasks that I need to do not for homeschooling. This would include for my YouTube channel, it would also include for our household, and pick one task to get done so I don't get behind. And finally, I will take my vitamins for the day and then I'm ready to face the house. This is when the morning really begins to speed up. My kids are awake and they know when I come down, it's time to start the day. We always start by unloading the dishwasher first and cleaning up the kitchen. I also reward myself with a cup of coffee at this point for all the hard work I'm about to do. My favorite coffee right now is a caramel pecan blend and I like to have it with just a bit of raw honey which I get from another family in our homeschool community and a little bit of coconut oil. Once the dishes are done, I like to wipe off all the countertops and do a quick reset in the living room. Then I begin our breakfast.
Now I'm doing some quick prep on some fruit and veggie bags that I like to have in the fridge for the kids to grab for snacks. I'll fill about a cup full of a mixture of fruits and vegetables, then they can grab them on our way out the door, or if I need to have a healthy snack in the middle of the day. This morning for breakfast, we are having yogurt and granola cups, bacon, and pepperoni omelets. Almost all of my children joined me this morning. Of course, my husband's already gone to work because at this point, it is probably 9.30 in the morning. We have gotten a really slow start as we had extra cleaning to do around the house. But three of my four children joined me for breakfast. My fourth one is not hungry and already working on her schoolwork so diligently she did not feel like she could take a break. I'd love to say we're having some sort of deep spiritual conversation, but the truth is we're discussing the logistics of the day and what we need to coordinate to get everything done. Finally, we are ready to start school. We always start our morning with the 100 chart. My kindergartner is counting 100 straws for her 100 chart, and my second grader is counting 100 pennies for her 100 chart. While we do classical conversations for our older children, and even for my younger two, I still use my father's world as the practical curriculum we do at home. And I really love how it fits with classical conversations. After counting their 100 items, we do the a -A Apple song from my father's world. I do store all of the kids' school books right here in a school rolling bag. Um, it fits underneath my kitchen table, so it's always easy and close at hand when I need it. But when we decide to do school out and about, we can just roll the bag away with us wherever we go. Next, my kindergartner is singing her ABC song, and I am quizzing her over some of the letter names to see if she can find them on her chart. My second grader is getting ready to begin her language arts workbook, and she is learning some new letter sounds today. Now my kindergartner is working on a math worksheet, which is helping her learn how to skip count. We still use the CC skip counting songs, which I'll link here for you. It helps with our math program, no matter what other curriculum we're using. I think the skip counting songs are one of the best tools at this younger age. I love the My Father's World first grade reading curriculum. They have a chart with all of the different letter combinations and weird sounds that English letters can make. And so we continue to use this year after year in a classical method. So even though my elder daughter here at the table is in second grade, we are using the classical method of repetition to repeat the first grade workbook a second time in order to really solidify all of those letter sounds and help her succeed and be successful in her reading.
Right now, my kindergartner is cutting out three lettered words, and she's going to sound those out in just a minute and glue them onto a worksheet that has a matching picture. At this point, I kind of rotate back and forth between each of my students' worksheets, helping them sound out words, read instructions, and keep moving forward. The goal is to get them both to complete their work at the same time so that it takes up less time in the day. However, there are a couple of things that we have to do individually, and at that point, I tell the other child that they can have a 10 or 15 minute recess to go play by themselves or with their toys while I focus on something a little more complicated with the other child. I love how my father's world schedules games as part of their curriculum. So we are now playing the letter sound bingo game. I call out a letter sound such as ma ma moon and they find that letter on their chart and cover it with a glass bead. They love these games. In fact, they'll beg to play them outside of school hours too. Now we are doing the blend ladder and my second grader is doing another sheet in her workbook. The blend ladder has been really helpful um, to visualize blending these sounds together and I'm going to attach a separate video of how we practice that together. This week in our kindergarten theme, we are learning about frogs. And so part of the curriculum is to play leapfrog for one of their interactive activities. They loved this game. Now we are going to practice our Bible truths that come with the kindergarten curriculum. So my elder daughter's been reciting these for a couple of years now. They're great simple truths and we copy the words into our Bible truths notebook each week and then they recite this week's and all the previous weeks um, individually. That way I know both of them are getting a good grasp on the truths. Sometimes we'll add hand motions if it's a particularly difficult phrase for them to memorize, and that makes it a lot of fun. Now begins one of my second graders focus times. She reads to me for 15 minutes a day while my kindergartner plays on her own and gets a brain break. Of course, you can see my older students are interrupting at this point and eager for my help. We have to pause school at this point because I have a lunch date to get to. So when I go up to my room to put on my shoes, I go ahead and switch out the laundry to stay on top of that. 
and then I am heading out to Tropical Smoothie with a friend and we are going to enjoy some conversation. As soon as I'm done with lunch, I have to rush home to pick up my eldest daughter and take her to gymnastics class. My older girls fed the younger ones lunch while I was gone, so thankfully that's off my plate. But when we get back from gymnastics, it is a surprise to find that the house is a little bit in shambles again. Everyone has been playing hard and no one has been picking anything up. So all the hard work we did this morning to make the house look beautiful was undone while I was gone at my lunch date. So we are now going to straighten up and tidy from lunch and playing this afternoon while I was out of the house. It is now the time of the day that we all need a little pick-me-up and Taylor Swift music is required. While the little kids continue to pick up their bedroom and the rest of their toys, I am getting started on dinner. And while it is a little bit early for dinner, I do have a several activities going on this evening, so I need to make sure that it is prepped and ready to go for whenever people are hungry. We will not sit down and eat as a family tonight, but that way I know everyone will have something in their bellies. Tomorrow is trash day, so I try to get the bins out early so we don't forget them. And now look, everything's been cleaned up one time more, reset, not quite as well as it was this morning, but good enough to end the day. So this evening, my eldest daughter is going to take the younger two out on a little date. So they are putting on their finest, cutest outfits. We're fixing their hair up and they are so excited to go out with her. Now that my younger two are dressed and ready to go, I realize I have not checked in with my older girls on how their school went today, nor did we finish all of our curriculum. So I am seeing what questions my eldest has. She seems to be okay, although we did not go over math. And now I'm checking in on my second daughter who has volleyball tonight. 
She does have some questions for me, so we're going to try to cover those real quickly. Although it is about time to take her to volleyball practice, and so we may have to just do double duty tomorrow. My younger two are ready and waiting for sister to take them. However, I just remember my second grader did not finish her morning school and still needs to do a math worksheet before she can go. Onward to volleyball practice now, and then my husband and I are going out on a date. Then it's time to pick up my daughter from volleyball, and when we get home, the other three are back from their date. We've all had a fantastic night. We're going to read our bedtime story, tuck everyone in. This was not a perfect day, but it was a good day, and it was a typical day. Good night.